everybody. Today we're going to be looking at dealing with aggression in young children. Why do they do it and what can we do about it? Now I remember when I was nursing my little baby and all of a sudden she bit me. She was about 10 months old. Why is she biting me? I'm, ah, that hurts. <laughs> I'm just like, duh, stop. Why is she biting me? She might be hungry. She might be looking for my reaction. She might be exploring her world. So it depends what age they are, right? So 10, 11 month olds start biting, maybe just out of pure curiosity. What will happen if you mention some hungry, stressed, tired, overwhelmed, <laughs> they haven't developed the ability to deal with those big emotions and it works. So let's say I'm a one year old and there's somebody in my space and I'm feeling encroached on. And so I bite them to say, back off. And now they get out of my way. What are the odds I'm going to do it again if it worked? So that's another reason that they do it is they've, they've learned it works to get their needs met. But a lot of it really does come down to stress overload. Somebody's taking their toy, they get more and more and more upset and finally they just bite them and then they get the toy back. It's hard to deal with those big feelings and those big frustrations, especially when you're just a toddler or a two-year-old. And so it really is a form of communication and it's very normal. Here's the problem. It's going to take a long time. We've been talking about this for children to learn to master stressful moments. Think about how long it takes them to learn to read. They start just with cooing and then they can say their first word by one year old. And then they start to be able to put two words together by two and by five, they can speak in full sentences, but it takes a long time. So how long does it take to learn not to bite or hit or kick when you get upset? It's going to take a while, but the reaction that we have is going to help it over time start to reduce as they start to gain the skills that they need. So I bet you're wondering what are some things we can do about it? I'm going to give you a great strategy in it that encompasses a lot of strategies, but I want you to remember one big word, help, help. Okay. So this is what we're going to do as an adult. And the reason I want you to think of that word is because they need your assistance. A lot of biting and aggression comes as a very strong message to an adult saying, I don't know how to handle these strong feelings. I don't know how to express myself or get my needs met right now. So I can't handle these big emotions. So what they need from us is to help. So let me break this down for you. What does it actually mean in action? Okay. Cause I know you want to know what to do. So number one, help develop your plan H have a plan. So that's what today is about. I'm going to give some strategies. You decide which ones fit for you and which ones you're going to use when you're dealing with aggression with the kids in your kit. So what you're going to do for your plan, a good piece is to really moderate your own feelings. So you're going to come in calm. We call this approach the influence approach. So if you come in, it's very normal. There, Jack has bitten again. So it's very normal as an adult to go, Jack, no, no biting. How many times do I have to tell you? It's loud, <laughs> it's big, and it's stressful. So as we learned in how to keep ourselves calm, that's going to infuse stress into the situation. So we have a plan to actually come in calmly with what we call an influence approach. You're going to see this in the video. So you're going to be calm. You're going to come in quiet, low voice, calm. And then that's the H and then avoid while you're doing that. Okay. So E, eliminate distress. So if you're holding things in your hands, if you're standing up above them, if your arms are flailing, they're going to get distracted by what you're all the things that you're doing. So what you want to do is eliminate distractions, get down at their level, eye to eye, so that they can see you and feel your calm side to side, right? So you're not like in their face, but right next to them, indicating with your hands and your motion what you want them to do to, to help to to. Um, assist that other child. Okay. So you've eliminated distractions. You've come in calm. The next one is you're going to label what you observe. 
So we talked about this a little bit last week, this idea of labeling their feelings and getting right in there. So that's what you're going to do. But in this case, you're also going to add just what you observe, observed. Johnny took your toy. You didn't like that, Marcus. That made you mad. You didn't like it when Johnny took your toy. Do you see how I'm trying to speak the voice, the communication I want to see happen? Um, wow, Johnny hit Marcus, and now Marcus is crying. Marcus is sad. So you're going to just calmly describe with words and your emotions what you see happening. Calmly, though, but with empathy in, in your face so that they feel heard in that moment. And then the last one is P, prompt. You're going to prompt them what you want them to do. What can they do in that moment um, when they get really mad, when they get really upset? Because they're still up here right now. You've helped bring them from ah, hitting or biting down a little calmer so that they can start to listen and tune in. Their thinking brain is starting to come back online. And so now you're going to prompt them for what you want them to do. So it's not going to be moving them on, like apologize. They're, they're not ready for that yet. They're really upset. So imagine if you're telling me you're really upset with your partner and I say, oh, and I, they will, wow, you're really upset about that. But really, you're going to need to apologize because you raised your voice to him. You'd be like, what? I need to apologize? When you're upset, that's just not what makes sense for you. So when you're there, you're going to be prompting them, what, you know, really, what do you want them to do? So you tell me, they're really mad. They want to hit. What could they do instead? Now, if any of you are going to write gentle touches, no, do not say gentle touch because gentle touch is for when you're being, when you're calm and you're being nice, you can give somebody a gentle touch. When you're really mad, you're not going to touch somebody. You're not going to really touch them gently when you're really mad, right? So they're, they're really exploring now. They're biting because they're really excited to explore. What would you prompt them to do? I would say give them something to explore. What can they bite on? What can they chew on? If that's the reason that they're biting, then the answer is going to be giving them something to explore, something they can chew on. Same with if they're teething. If the child is teething, they need something to bite on or chew on. So give them that frozen washcloth or, or something that they can help them with that pain in their mouth. But what if they're doing it, like you said, because they're overwhelmed with their feelings. They're so mad at this child, they want to hit them. What can they do instead? So one idea is to take deep breaths. What else? That squeeze the oranges, shake off the juice. So what we want to do is we want to start to infuse what we want them to do. So when a child is really upset, they can say, help, help me. So we want to teach them, say, help, help me. I think if they don't have the language, you might even get them to go, Grr. isn't that better than biting or hitting? So can they go Grr, like that? How about if they need space? Can they walk away? <laughs> so this is my strategy to work with for today. It's called help. Have a plan. Eliminate distraction. Get down at their level and really calm in with that influence approach. And then label what you see happening. What feelings are happening? What are they trying to communicate with each other? And then really prompt them what you want them to do next. Give them that idea. So I hope this was helpful for you guys today. I'm, and then I'm going to put the links to the video and the different article that will be really helpful for you. Those two things, that video and that article, I think are going to give you a lot today. So I'll be around for questions, but I would like to thank you for joining me today to get some top tips here at Nap Time Nuggets number 13. Teen, dealing with aggression. We looked at why do children bite and what are some things that you can do about it. So let me know in the comments what did you find helpful today and what do you want to take with you or do you have any questions today. Over and out. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next week.